What's always helpful um, when talking about foreign places are maps. So I'm going to, I don't know if this is working, in a Spanish language school in the capital. And um, I was taking care of the kids during the day while they were at that language school when I, well, Sammy was taking care of the kids. <laughs> Um, I was really running around buying cars, <laughs> buying the car and getting it fixed and things like that. Um, and we also started the process of looking for a home to rent. Um, also during that time, um, after about two weeks, um, what, what I started to do was I started to take a bus ride from the capital to Dahabon um, roughly every weekend um, to work with Waskar and trying to um, find a home and also to um, try to see what we can do about getting um, Sunday morning worship services started in Dahabon while leaving my family in the uh, capital and they were attending um, Pastor Guzman's church during that time. So, um, so next slide, please. Uh, and back, by the way, that was Pastor Guzman on that slide, on that last slide. Um, this is another important person right there in the middle that guy to the right is Joby, I think you know him. But that guy in the middle is Waskar. Waskar is um, Pastor Guzman's son-in-law. And uh, uh, basically his, his wife's um, younger brother. And Waskar is our man on the ground. He's been our man on the ground in Dahabon for the last few years. And he is a, saying that he's a tireless worker is an understatement. Waskar, he gets everything done. Um, I, he's, he's really helpful. He teaches me how to spend my money well. He teaches me how not to get my money stolen. <laughs> he, um, he's, you know, he's just all over the place. He knows everyone in town. So when you walk through the town with Waskar, you, you're, you're, you meet a bunch of other people. I have many friends only because I was with Waskar <laughs> um, much of the time. So Waskar has just been a real key, and it still is a real key down there in, um, in Dahabon. He's a very trustworthy man, too. Um, Pastor Guzman trusts him with a lot. Um, they do, um, Waskar has been recently converted, maybe a year or so ago. Um, they trust him with many things regarding um, some of their ministry work in Haiti. Um, he's, you, can leave, you can leave expensive things. You can leave... You can leave your keys with Waskar. Waskar is just a, just a very, very trustworthy brother. Uh, next slide, please. So come February 20th, we finally had our first worship service in, in Dahabon. And I know that's not the traditional picture of what a worship service looks like, but that's what a worship service looks like when you only have four people and when two of those are you and your son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we went out evangelizing prior, and not many showed up. With that, uh, Waskar in the green shirt, and that gentleman to the left there is a gentleman named Jaime. Jaime is a Haitian gentleman who, since our last trip there last July, he um, he had he had come to the um, the Bible studies that the brothers had been holding um, after we left. And Waskar had been telling me that this guy has been, the, he and his family have been the most faithful um, ever since. Um, so Jaime came and joined, and I preached the gospel during that time. Um, and um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a very small event. Um, it would, from the eyes, look seemingly insignificant. But I, I continue to pray that that was the beginning of something uh, much larger that the Lord might do in Dahabon. Um, next slide, please. So fast forward a little bit. Um, while looking for houses to rent, we've had a lot of trouble. It's, you know, it's not very easy to rent a home in Dahabon. Um, part of the problem is the infrastructure that like we're used to here when it comes to renting and buying homes doesn't really exist. So it's not like there's some MLS listing or you can go online or Zillow or something like that and compare prices and all, all, it's all word of mouth. So what Waskar and I would do is we, he, you know, he would go to people that he knew 
owned properties and asked them. Or people that, you know, he thought might own properties and asked them. You might see a sign on a property and then you ask the neighbors about that. So we're going all around town getting information on a bunch of properties. Because my family's so large, most of the properties that we've looked at weren't really viable properties. You know, I have seven kids. Um, and um, um, and one, one property that came up as an option was um, this house that here in the background. Um, and it was a house, it, at, at first we looked at it as a house for me and my family to stay in. So it's a nice property, um, pretty large, uh, really nice big yard, which is really uncommon in Dahabon. And, but there's only one problem, there's only one bathroom with a shower. And with a family of nine people, that's a no bueno. <laughs> um, but so we rejected it at first. Um, but after thinking and talking to Pastor Guzman, we realized, oh man, this would be a perfect property uh, for us to have uh, services in. You know, some some large rooms in there. And uh, we ended up renting this property um, for a very good price um, um, to to hold worship services. So we, uh, we rented this property. Um, at this point, we don't have a home yet, um, but um, we, um, I talked to Pastor Guzman, and we arranged something on March 5th and 6th where we went down together to Dahabon. We held wor a worship service on Saturday evening, an evangelistic worship service, and then another worship service on Lord's Day morning, March 6th. And, um, and it kind of kicked things off again a little bit. And we also met a few new people. And this is a picture from that Sunday of everyone gathered together with our church sign. Um, so if, next slide, please. So I want to introduce you to a few people that came um, during that service. I know it might be a little hard to see, but there's a gentleman looking straight at the camera in like a blue plaid shirt there. That's Edward. You may have heard his name. I mentioned it to you in a video sometime past. This weekend was a um, really pivotal weekend for Edward. Edward, Edward, March 5th, um, uh, became really guilty over many of the sins that he has committed in his life. Um, he, in, in many respects, he made a real mess of his life. And he started calling people that he had hurt and um, asking them for his forgiveness, for, for their forgiveness. Um, and, you know, basically declaring to them that he's a wicked person. Um, this is without any of us having talked to him or anything. This is on his own. And he um, became, just um, began to despair um, because he wasn't, he didn't, it didn't seem to him like these people would forgive him. Um, he began to have, I don't know the depths of his thoughts of despair, but um, the way they've been described to me are serious thoughts of despair. He um, ended up calling Idalia, um, who is um, Pastor Guz, um, who is Waskar's wife, and Idalia got him in contact with Pastor Guzman. Pastor Guzman um, talked to him very briefly and um, invited him to our worship service that Saturday evening. Um, that evening, I preached the gospel, um, uh, declared, you know, um, explained to him that he is a bad person and, and the work of Jesus Christ. And Edward, Edward turned from his sin. And um, um, I don't think I've ever, um, well, maybe I have, but not in front of my face in this way, seen someone um, converted in, in such a manner. Um, he, he has been faithful ever since, and it hasn't been a very long time, but I'm talking about faithful in terms of coming out and evangelizing with us. He is asking serious questions about the Bible. Um, he loves the Word of God. You should, he's, um, I, I tell Oliver, when Oliver was down there with us for a month, Oliver and his family. I kept saying the same thing to Oliver. Edward is like a glass of cold water on a hot day. You know, you preach... To Edward, um, I can preach to his face all day, all day long, um, because he is so attentive. He is, um, he he loves the Word of God. Um, he was texting me even here. He wants, he, I had his sister lives in Tampa. 
did, you know, are you going to call my sister? Just, just text me, just remind me to call my sister. <laughs> you know, um, he, um, there's a particular issue that we're working through, and he, uh, I told him I'd look for some resources for him. Did you get those resources? <laughs> He's um, just a good, good brother, a lovely brother. And we've gone out evangelizing a few times, and um, he's um, very evangelistic. Um, you see there at the bottom left-hand corner is a lady named Tati. Uh, Sergio knows Tati, because Tati came to some of our services in the past, and Tati has been very faithful. Just a week ago, we found out Tati lived in our new home that we have now. Um, Tati um, actually lives very close by to us, um, and she, she's been soaking up the Word of God as well. And then there's a gentleman, you'll see a better picture of him later. He's, there, he's got his hands on his eyes, caught him at the wrong time. That's Ignacio. Um, we call him Nacho. Um, and um, Nacho is, um, he's a dairy farmer in Dahabon. And he, um, he's not sure where he's at with the Lord at the moment, but he's asking very many good questions. And he seems to want to follow the Lord. Um, and he and he wants to he wants to make sure that he understands the gospel and understands it well. Um, Oliver and I got a chance to eat lunch with Nacho, and uh, Nacho asked some really good questions. And he invited us to his farm to spend some time with him as well. So, um, so it's very very dear dear people that we've been worshiping with. Um, so next slide, please. So we had a team. We had a team come. Uh, um, the Prime family, Anya, my sister Lydia, uh, Joby. I hope I'm not missing anybody. Um, they all came. Uh huh. Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. How can I forget Oliver? Oliver actually stayed for a full month. <laughs> Oliver and his family. Uh, uh, they came and to encourage us and to help us with the work. And this is a. Um, uh, and one of the things that we did was we went to um, the, cent uh, the Central Park area, which is right in front of the Catholic Church in town, and we evangelized um, for a number of days there. Uh, next slide, please. You have Anya and Lydia evangelizing to some people in the park there. Next slide. And also, um, in the evenings, what we would do is we would get together and we would have these uh, Bible study times where we had these question and answer sheets that we go through. Um, we take people to scriptures and we basically um, walk through some basic biblical doctrine. Um, it's sort of like a little lessons that uh, Pastor Guzman had put together. This particular picture is from our last night where we were um, where I asked a few people to share their testimonies, uh, a few people in the group to share their testimonies with uh, those in attendance. And that was a very encouraging time. And uh, one of the people that I was most encouraging for was Edward to hear. He was very attentive during that time. Next slide, please. Um, there's another person that we've met recently. His name is Nicola. He also has a friend named Tevi. Um, there's two Haitian um, boys. I couldn't find a picture of Tevi. But uh, that's Nicola right there, sitting down with um, my wife and with little Johnny and Buddy. And uh, they were playing, I forget the name, what's the name of the game? Wose? Huh? Wosle? It's some game, it's similar to Jack's. <laughs> but uh, he was, and they were playing this game um, on, the, on the, the ground right in front of the church house um, after service um, one morning. And uh, Nicola has been, um, he's been coming uh, late, but we've been able to spend some time preaching the gospel to him, talking to him. He's a young kid. He's 15 years old. He has no family anywhere nearby. Um, his family lives um, far deeper into Haiti, so he's by himself. Um, he's, he's not there in Dahabon legally. He actually, um, and in fact, he gets rounded up every once in a while and sent back. And then he crosses the river, <laughs> comes back, and um, we're trying to um, help him to think through how to order his life well. And we also are trying to help preach, the, we're trying to preach the gospel to him that he would be converted and, and um, that we might be able to worship with him. Um, so, uh, next slide, please. 
I think I may have ordered these, some of these pictures wrong, but there's some more evangelism in the park. And again, next slide. Um, that is um, Calmeet. That's when they originally met Nicola. Um, Calmeet, from through Calmeet's evangelism to him. And again, um, next slide. You have Robinson preaching the gospel there. You know, um, we had, uh, um, and, and basically this preaching the gospel in town is what that trip primarily was when the group came down. And everyone, it was a real blessing. One of the real blessings was that we had people with um, multiple language speaking abilities and everyone got to preach to those who <laughs> spoke their language. So some of us speak enough, speak Spanish and we, we preach the gospel in Spanish and some of us speak Haitian Creole and some of us don't speak any of the languages, but we figured out ways to communicate. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Um, and again, sorry. Um, and that's the better picture of Nacho that um, I promised right there in the striped shirt. And Nacho, um, th these are some of the sweeter moments. Um, if, uh, and this is sort of the, I think Pastor Mark and I named them the Motley Crew just a few days ago. Um, Waskar, Ignacio, and Edward, um, these are the guys who, by God's grace, I'll be spending the most time with. Um, going forward. Um, these are the guys who have been the most faithful. Um, we, I had a meeting with them just um, just the other Wednesday and um, just to explain to them what a week would likely look like um, in our church. Um, just, you know, just like every church, we'll have a weekly schedule. We'll have small groups. We'll have corporate evangelism. Um, we'll have um, worship services on the Lord's Day. And um, these brothers have been very encouraging. Um, they, um, one example is I, ex I was explaining corporate evangelism to them. And uh, Nacho, he's a dairy, since he's a dairy farmer, he's asking the question. He's like, well, you know, this so all sounds really good. But, you know, he's like, I, I, have, to, I have to work every day. And he does. I mean, those cows, those cows on his farm don't feed themselves. So he's got to go, and the grass isn't growing well, so he has to actually go round up the cows, bring them to a trough, and feed them every day. He actually has to rush out after service every, every Sunday morning and go and feed his cows. Um, so he's, he wasn't sure if he'd be make, able to make corporate evangelism every week. And so we were explaining to him... Um, what it looks like to be faithful in evangelism, how we might make concessions for that, um, and but at the same time, strongly encouraging him to find a way to come out corporately with us. And then Waskar, um, probably the most encouraging thing I've heard any of these brothers say, it, he said, um, we, we, we actually moved on to another subject. And then he sort of raised up his hand. And, and Waskar, he's a he's an ominous kind of character. You know, he's got a, He's got a deadly stare about him. And so he raised up his hand. So I'm like, oh man, what's Waskar going to say? You know? um, and Waskar uh, says um, that, this, that thing about evangelism, I want to say something about it. He says, we all have to work and we all have to provide for our families. That's true. But he said, in the end, we all have time. And, and it's a matter of do we really want to do these things? And he he um, basically settled everyone down and said, we can do this. We can, we can go out together, we can preach the gospel together, and we can get this done. And, he, um, and with just a, one, a few phrases, he settled it, and, um, and everyone was encouraged, and we moved on. I was very, I'm very encouraged by the, the attitude of these guys. They seem very committed. Another thing that they were very, was very encouraging was... Um, when we talked about church discipline. You know, I had put together this paper of all the things that I wanted to share with them during this time, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting, I'm, you know, I'm littering it with scriptures. I'm trying to explain everything um, that goes on because I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get a lot of pushback from this stuff. You know, like, how do you explain church discipline to people who've never heard anything about church discipline before, you know? They're going to, like, freak out when they hear that, you know, Matthew 18, step four, you put someone out of the church, you know? <clears throat> you know, when I mentioned all of these things, especially church discipline, they were like, oh, yeah, 
yeah, we need that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little disappointed, you know? I kind of wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to make it more controversial. <laughs> but, um, but all in all, um, these, these guys are really excited because they've, they've never had an opportunity to attend a, a biblical church before. They've never sat under good biblical preaching before. Um, they, um, they've heard about um, certain things in the Bible, but they've just never seen it with their eyes. And all of the religion that they've seen in town is, is hypocrisy, hip- hypocrisy and falsehood. So to them, this is, um, this is just fresh, cold water on a hot day. Um, so I've just been really encouraged by them. Next slide, please. So um, since then, um, since uh, renting the home and everything and um, all these meetings, we just continued, we've been continuing to hold services. Um, We've had more visitors. Um, One of the ladies that Edward and I, uh, Edward uh, and I went to an area where he he frequented because it was his his idea. He wanted to go and evangelize where he used to go. And he brought me to the house of an old friend of his named Jehida. And we preached the gospel to her. She's coming to services now. Um, there's another couple named Fabian and Cruz. Um, they are coming to services now. Fabian and Cruz um, used to go to Suhel Michelin's church in Santo Domingo and had since moved um, years ago to, um, to the Dahabon area. And they're really excited. Um, um, they were explaining to me that in that first service that um, the Waskar and them, they, you know, this, all this colloquial uh, local history about Dahabon, you know, they like to talk about. And they were explaining how this is the very first Baptist church, period, yeah. bad or good. This is the uh, very first Baptist church in this area. Um, then there's, there, hasn't, there hasn't been one ever, not even one close by. Um, so, and they're just talking about how, how excited they are. Uh, right now, we're going through the book of Mark, and we, um, um, we, we've gone through three weeks of introductions. I don't know how good, it, if that's good or not, <laughs> but I'm finished with my introductions. <laughs> and um, when I go back, which is, um, I, I, I leave to go back um, this coming Friday, and we're going to be in chapter 1, verse 1. Um, on when we get back. But if you will, um, turn with me to Acts chapter 14. I actually meant to read this in the beginning. <laughs> but out of nervousness, I just uh, started talking. <laughs> Acts chapter 14. Starting at verse 24. I tend to read this every time I give any kind of missions report to anybody. I think it's a good reminder as to what these mission reports are. When we do this, this is a, um, we're actually doing a biblical thing here when we gather together to do this. So starting in verse 24, it says, Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. And from there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And when they had arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles, and they remained no little time with the disciples. And um, I want to say that if there's anything encouraging that you've heard um, from my testimony of how things have gone, um, this is, um, um, do we work in this? Absolutely, you know? Yeah, I moved down there with my family and we were working um, the work of evangelism there, and, um, holding services and things of that like. Are you working? Absolutely. Um, you're, you're giving of your funds. Some of you have made trips in the past, even recently. Um, but in the end, this is um, the work that God had done. And God is using us um, to do this, this great work. And what is he doing in Dahabon? He's opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. 
Um, so what I'm doing here is um, as we're being gathered together, just like uh, um, Paul and Barnabas gathered the church together, um, I am, in a sense, gathering you together, and I'm here to declare to you all that God had done, had, has done with me and my family and all those who have labored with us in Dahabon. And I want to testify to you that he is opening a door of faith to the Gentiles there. Um, so um, I want to encourage you, next slide, um, this, um, to pray according to the same four Ps. Um, they're still all relevant. I, th I, th I thought about changing them up. I was like, you know, we moved there. Let's, let's start fresh. But I can't think of anything new. It's all the same. <laughs> um, um, please pray for um, the purpose um, that Christ will be glorified, that he will receive the reward for his suffering. Um, please pray for the people down there um, that the Lord would genuinely convert them um, and that um, the Lord would sustain them and that he would build a core group as it's, it looks like he is already doing. Um, um, please, please pray for me. Um, please, please pray for my ministry preparation and the adjustment of my family. We're still adjusting. I'm still learning um, how to be a pastor. <laughs> Um, it's, it's interesting how many things I take for granted. <laughs> uh, I've taken for granted getting done here. You know, I've never like run a service from start to finish here. <laughs> you know, I've already, I jumped into something that's already established. It's a whole new baby <laughs> to go down there and to start things from scratch. Um, but the Lord has been very, very kind and faithful. So please pray for me in that, that the Lord would help me to, to, to serve well and to shepherd his people well. Um, and again, for my family. And please um, continue to pray for our process of moving. We only moved into our, um, our new home just a week and a half ago um, from Sunday. So we're still, you know, it's been a lot of back and forth drives from Santo Domingo to Dahabon and back. And uh, we're, not, we're not even close to settled yet. Uh, most of our stuff is still in the United States. Um, the whole reason I'm even back here is this isn't a planned trip. <laughs> I'm, I'm back here because um, we have to fix some visa issues um, that we have in the Dominican Republic. We have to file for a new visa here um, um, with a Dominican consulate here to go back. So, um, so please pray for us in that whole process uh, of moving. Um, we cover your prayers. We need your prayers. And um, next slide. Um, please continue to, um, to consider giving. Um, give cheerfully. Um, give with a willing heart. Um, there's, there's, still, there's still needs to be had. And, uh, um, and we are, you know, so we still uh, would like, if, you, if you're able and if you're willing, uh, please still consider giving to the work there. And uh, we'll do our best to keep you well informed and to um, be faithful um, to, your, um, to the gifts that you give. Um, so I wanted to also open it up. Oh, also, before I open it up for questions, I want to tell every one of you thank you so much for your encouragement, for your prayers, um, for all of your giving. Um, this has been, um, it's been a really good two and a half months down there, but it's also been a very challenging two and a half months. And um, all of the text and, um, you know, uh, video messages and the team coming down and um, what great encouragement. Um, your faithful giving has been a great encouragement. Hearing of your prayers has been a great encouragement. Um, so um, thank you so much. Um, those things don't go um, unnoticed by us. And you're in my prayers as well. And I'm very thankful for all of you. So um, I want to open it up to uh, any questions that you might have. Oh, Papa Troy. Nice beard, by the way. I like it. <laughs> Still trying to get used to it. Yeah. Um, I'm past the face. Yeah. <laughs> Feel on your face. Um, so a couple of things. One, I'm absolutely blown away. That's awesome. Praise the um, This is really great to hear this. Um, and God bless those that have been able to go down and help you as well. So one would be um, your, your rent, because I, I know that when I went mm -hmm. down to Guatemala and just happened to be with um, Brother Ryan, 
there were mm -hmm. some things with rent and electrical and it just kind of worked out mm -hmm. uh, that, that he was able to handle electrical. I was able to handle the contract negotiation stuff, but it's mm -hmm. really hard. How long is your lease? And can they just like break it at any time? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one. So, mm -hmm. you know, hey, sorry, thanks. We like you here, but we're just going to, and they can do that. Um, do you have a, um, a legal time that you can stay? And then mm -hmm. you can have services in the house. There's no, there's no, um, you know, like they don't, restrictions on that. Yeah, yeah. So um, for, for rent for both places, both the house and, um, and my own home, um, those are, we're, we're there on a one-year lease. Um, I don't know if the reason you're asking the question is because we lost the other church house. Um, if, is that why you're asking? Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, that was because we're on a month-to-month -month lease with that with that house. So we're on a one-year lease. We were on a month-to-month -month lease with the other house because there was some difficulties with the, the landlord that caused us not to um, be comfortable with signing on with a, another longer lease. Um, so it wasn't so much that it was taken from us. It was um, uh, there, there was something mutual in the fact that we didn't <laughs> continue with that house as well. Um, um, and there was another question in there. Uh, it, was, it was the leases and there was something else. What was it? Or was that it? Sorry, brother. Oh, yeah, there's no... Um, we, we did have to actually ask permission from the landlord if we could um, use that house um, as a church house, and the landlord's perfectly fine with it. In fact... Um, the landlord's son, one of his sons, uh, uh, comes to our services as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I usually don't like First Baptist anything, you know. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, Anya. Welcome back. Thank We're you. Good to be super back. very happy uh, to see you. Um, maybe a premature question, mm -hmm. but uh, about the visas and everything. Mm -hmm. Would you have to come back often, or if everything goes well this time around, everything will be able to be done from now on from Tehabon? Yeah, um, yeah, this should be a one time thing. So um, we. Um, right now, we were in, on there on a tourist visa. And we were given advice um, some time back that we could just go there on a tourist visa and uh, and and then change status over there. Um, I don't know if something had changed with the laws there or not, but you, there is no change of status there for um, from a tourist visa to to another visa. So you have to come back to the country, file at the consulate in your country, and then go back. Um, once we get the correct visa, then the lawyers at Pastor Guzman's church are going to be able to um, uh, start the process with residency. And that's a much easier process, and that can all happen in the country. So it's just, you know, it's one uh, un, uh, uh, unseen hurdle that, yeah, that we, you know, have to cross. Yeah. Hey, hey, Welcome back, bro. Um, back. My concern is how's the evangelism going as far as uh, mm -hmm. what kind of obstacles do you face? I know there's Catholicism, but other mm -hmm. obstacles. And then second, can you speak more about the diseases and stuff there? Yeah. Um, so um, as far as evangelism, you know, the main obstacle is really language more than anything. Um, we... You know, there is, as far as like uh, spiritual or doctrinal, you know, obstacles, yeah, Catholicism is very big. So most people consider themselves to be Catholics, even though most people, just similar to here, most people aren't good Catholics. Most people are nominal Catholics, you know. I was baptized as a baby and then, you know, never seen a church since then kind of thing. Um, so um, we have that. There are, Dahabon has like all the cults, you know, so there's, there's the J JWs, there's the, the Mormons, um, uh, there's the Seventh-day Adventists, so they're all there. Uh, and 
Um, so, you know, that could be a potential obstacle. I haven't really run into to them yet or people who um, are with them yet. Um, but, you know, yes, so far um, it's, 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 really, it's been really similar to here as far as like how the conversations go. You know, people believe that they're good people. They, um, they're self-righteous. They believe that they can go to heaven based on, upon a record of their good works. And um, they don't see their sin. And, um, and, uh, and we're attempting to, we just go through the same process. You know, go through the law and um, show them the Lord Jesus Christ and, and call them to, to faith and repentance. Oh, diseases. I'm sorry, brother. Um, there, there are some diseases um, there that, particularly on mosquito-borne illnesses like dengue fever, things like that. So it's really important to, um, to, you know, make sure you don't get bit by too many mosquitoes. We're, we're still working on that because we're getting bit up really bad. <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, um, that's that's kind of the main difference. You know, also can't drink the water, that kind of thing. So there's, you know, uh, amoebas in the water. But yeah, that's nothing too out of the ordinary either with that, apart from mosquito stuff in the water. Yeah. Who else? Six to Um. Thank you, brother. Yeah. We miss, we miss you. Miss you too. My Every pleasure. time we hear the announcement, it reminds us <laughs> the countdown. But I just wanted to encourage you, uh, out of Hebrews 10, uh, verse 35, 36, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Uh, we think about you every day, brother, and I just want to encourage you to, uh, like you said, you started out with one, maybe two people, and uh, sometimes that's the way the Lord wants uh, things to happen because uh, he's sovereign and everything so he knows everything that's going on why it's happening and i just want to encourage you that uh as challenging as it may be you have seem to have a very good support system you know down amen. there and you have us always praying for you brother amen thank you so, so much brother. love you it's very encouraging yeah <laughs> thank you uh christine um if there's time could you share a little bit about mm -hmm. I was encouraged to ask about um, your introductions to Mark and what you taught. And then I also have another question. Yeah. I don't know if you shared this already, but is your family staying here longer and you're going back on Friday or is everybody going back? Uh, this um, so Buddy and I will be going back um, this coming Friday and my family is going to stay here until the visa is up. Um, so yeah, we are going to be separated for a while. Um, as far as um, Mark goes, um, went through um, three introductions. Um, the first one, um, I, went, I, I went through, I introduced the Bible and the Gospels in general. So one of the things um, that's an issue there um, is people aren't familiar with the Bible at all. Um, there's like really like not an understanding of what the Bible is how we got the Bible, um, the different um, genres of literature in the Bible. Um, so explaining what those are, explaining um, how the Gospels are the testimonies of the apostles and, um, and how we are to read them, how we're to pr approach it. Um, um, the, second, the second introduction was on Mark the Man. So we looked at scriptures that spoke of John Mark in the Bible and we sort of pieced together the story of who he was and um, uh, his failure, <laughs> his promise, his failure, and his restoration. Um, and we took encouragement from that. And then um, the third was basically an overview of the book of Mark. So gave an outline of the book of Mark, um, explained uh, some of the distinctives about the book, you know, its rapid pace. We were able to look at some particular words that give evidence to um, the pace of the book. We looked at um, some of like the doctrinal features of the book and, um, and um, how, like, um, who was Mark's audience and some evidences of who his audience was. And in each one of those sermons, we, we drew a number of applications um, for ourselves. 
Um, we, in the first sermon, um, we, we drew application, basically how we're to approach the Bible in general. Um, and the um, second um, sermon, we drew application from Mark's life and what, um, what God, God's, God's mercy to Mark and how, um, how having the book of Mark is um, we can see his mercy on display, not just in the book, but in the author of the book itself. Um, and then um, in the last one, we drew application from um, what, what, the, um, what the outline of the book of Mark has to say about our Savior as a whole. Um, and we saw that we see that Jesus Christ is a very active, working Savior who's tireless um, and, uh, and, and very powerful and powerful to save and powerful to help his people. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the, the first three. Um, Jesse, I think I'm running out of time here. I, I was just wondering, how do you think your Spanish is progressing? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you feel that there's more um, people that speak Spanish there or Haitian? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so my Spanish um, has grown quite a bit. Um, it, it, and I was telling someone just yesterday um, that my, um, you know, I, I hadn't experienced this before, but because I'm there and it's like a, a real, you know, I guess we use the word immersion, like an, immers an immersion environment. Um, I, it, like I can, I can feel the, the growth in my Spanish um, each week, like I can, I can look at things that I wasn't able to do, and now that I'm able to do conversations that I wasn't able to have, and then now that I'm able to have. Um, so, um, for instance, um, when the team was there, um, Anya came when we were signing the lease to our new house. Um, she came and helped us talk to the lawyer, um, and just as la and you know, the lawyer, he, he's he's tough to talk to. This guy mumbles, and you know, he's really fast, you know. And last week, I went to the lawyer's office by myself and talked to the lawyer, you know. Um, so there's, um, uh, I can see the improvement. So, you know, I don't, you know, language is a very difficult thing to measure sometimes because um, there can be times where, I, like, there's times where I'm like, man, I speak Spanish. You know, I have a bunch of conversations in Spanish, long conversations, counseling conversations in Spanish, and they go well, they go just fine. And I'm saying everything I want to say, and I'm hearing everything that they want to say. And then there's other times where I'm like, I don't know if I speak any language, you know? <laughs> um, so, um, but I can definitely see the improvement. So am I like fluent, like a native? Absolutely not. Um, but do I speak Spanish? Maybe, yeah, I might, I might speak Spanish at this point. Um, but there's still a long way to go. Um, as far as um, Haitian, Creole, and Spanish, most people still speak Spanish, but it isn't uncommon for um, you to meet someone who is Haitian who doesn't speak Spanish. So, um, I, so yeah, we do, in, we do encounter that situation, and yeah, that can be a little difficult sometimes. Um, I've, I, I did have a lot of Creole under my belt in the past, but I've, I've lost quite a bit of it <laughs> since then, yeah. Um, big Mike, I'm a, I'm a, this is the last, okay. Well, thank you. Are there translations of your, your messages available or? No. 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 <laughs> okay. <I'm> sorry. Because <laughs> as, you, as you spoke about your introductions to Mark, I'm like, I really like to look at those. Oh, and, well, praise the Lord. But, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I can send you a manuscript in English. Awesome. It always gets written in English first, but it's not always true to what was really said. <laughs> um, last question. Mike. So it isn't, so it's not so much uh, a question, but more so an uh, encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought about, I thought about something that I read uh, out so of Second Corinthians chapter six. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter six, um, and I wanted to. Um, to, to read that to you as an encouragement as well as also a reminder for you to remember this. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. 
For he saith, I heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be, be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, afflictions, and necessities, and distresses, and stripes, and imprisonments, and tumults, and labors, and watchings, and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by the love and fame, by the word of truth, and by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report, uh, as deceivers and yet true. Uh, as unknown yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. I just wanted to um, encourage you uh, with, with that, that yes, you know, obviously you've had some challenges and difficulties, but the grace of God is always sufficient as he encouraged Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, uh, and whatnot, and so... And so, yeah, just, I just wanted to encourage you with that. Receive not the grace of God in vain. You know, remember this and, um, and just know that no, no matter what the situation is, you know, uh, God's grace is always sufficient. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. And, um, and if any of you have any more questions, we're here all day. So come, ask me, whatever you got, and, um, and l let's pray. Father in heaven, um, thank you once again for this opportunity to be with the brethren. Um, thank you for your um, for building your church in Dahabon. Please continue to build it. Please continue your work here in Orlando at Cornerstone, Lord. And um, Lord, uh, we we look forward to the day where we would gather together in total, in full, and worship you um, face to face. Um, so, Lord, uh, please preserve us until that day. And um, help us to be faithful um, until that day comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.